Welcome to StarTrek.com. What I want. Today we're counting down every character played by Jeffrey Combs. I agree. Jeffrey Combs is one of the only actors to play a variety of characters throughout the Trek franchise. What's important is how. From Wayun to a Holosuite guest, here's how they all stack up. Number nine, a Holosuite guest. Among the many other guests at Vic Fontaine's club is the conspicuously placed Combs looking snazzy in a 1960s suit and tie. Is he a hologram? Is he another Starfleet officer who felt like dressing up that night? He doesn't speak and remains in the background. Nothing lasts forever. So we'll never know for sure. Let the fan fiction begin. This one's from the heart. Number eight, Solduk. You must be Commander Solduk. We are the Order of the Empty Crown. In Star Trek Elite Force 2, Combs assumed the role of the main villain Solduk, a Romulan commander responsible for planning a military coup against the Romulan Star Empire using an ancient race of genetically engineered bugs. We'll make key Romulan senators so afraid of a Federation first strike that they'll give the Empty Crown an endless supply of exiles. Number 7, Pink. In the season 6 Voyager episode, Sunkatse. Welcome to Sunkatse. Pank kidnaps Seven and Nine and forces her to compete in a popular blood sport. You should have superior strength, agility, stamina. What makes it even easier to forget that Combs, or anyone else, appeared in the episode is that it also features Dwayne The Rock Johnson at the height of his WWE career. Pank's insulting me by putting you in the pit to face me. I must warn you, I possess superior strength. I'm trembling. <laughs> Forgetting. Tens of thousands of requests to see you fight again. Number six, Tyron. In the Deep Space Nine episode Meridian, Tyron is a super creep. What I want is not in your catalog. But it says a lot about Combs as a performer. Even when he's doing something so weird and off-putting, you can't help but to watch just to see what's going to happen next. And what is it you want? I want Major Kira. It's his work in this episode that would lead him to getting called back again and again and again. Don't tell me. I don't want to know. Can you do it? Number five, Kevin McCauley. Part of the fun of an episode like Far Beyond the Stars is along with its still relevant social commentary and stellar storytelling. Nice suit. Where'd you get it? It's one of those classic Star Trek scenarios that allows the entire cast to play completely different characters. What are you doing around here? I work here. Awfully well dressed for a janitor. McCauley never appears again in the series, but Sisko carries these events with him all the way to his ascension to the Celestial Temple. Take your drawing and get out of here. Number four, Krem. Shortly after Deep Space Nine's conclusion in 1999, Combs was cast as a Ferengi for the Enterprise episode Acquisition. He played Krem, who along with his crew attempt to sabotage and steal the Enterprise. In many ways, he could possibly be an ancestor to Deep Space Nine's future union leader, Rom. You're right, Crap. Number three, Brunt. She's speaking to me again. The Frankie we most closely associate with Combs is Liquidator Brunt. Brunt first appears in the third season episode, Family I'm Business. Saying about a lesson. Ah, the lesson is no one can outsmart the FCA. And for a time, largely serves as an antagonist to Quark. Your mother's confession will serve as a warning to females all over the Alliance. Number two, Wayun. Wayun is Combs' own pick for his favorite performance in all of Trek. I have to admit I find it somewhat disturbing. He started off as merely the third unique character the actor portrayed in season three of Deep Space Nine. Your people want you to come home, Otto. Combs portrayed both Wayun and Brunt in the episode Dogs of War. I'm sure there must be something I can do to make you change your mind. He became the first Trek actor to portray two different, completely unrelated, reoccurring characters in the same episode. If you don't mind, I'd like to inspect the wreckage. <laughs> Closing out our list at number one, Shran. What the hell are you doing here? Looking out for you pink skins. After nearly a decade playing various degrees of villains on Star Trek, it's with Shran that we get to see Combs in a new light as an honorable anti-hero with a serious chip on his shoulder. Been monitoring all Vulcan. He undergoes a lot of growth over four seasons, and according to producer Manny Cotto, had Enterprise gone on to a fifth season, he likely would have found himself stationed on the bridge. They're preparing for a war against us. How would you rank Jeffrey Combs' characters? She's speaking to me again. Like and subscribe for all things Star Trek.